2003, the FLW Tour made its first ever visit to Louisiana's vast Atchafalaya Basin, and the anglers loved it. The Bayou beckons again, and we're back. On the line, a $900,000 purse. Get your Mardi Gras beads ready. The good times start rolling now on FLW Outdoors. Yes, sir, that's what we're looking for, my friend. Ball game, baby. <laughs> yeah. He could have one more in. He does. We have a champion. Yeah. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Hallelujah! Hello, everyone, and welcome to FLW Outdoors. I'm Carlton Wing, along with Charlie Evans, and we are joining you from Morgan City, Louisiana, the site of the second stop on the Walmart FLW Tour, and it's Championship Day, Charlie, and that's special. It's really exciting. I'll tell you what, $100,000 up for stake here. Somebody's going to walk away here with their wife changed this very afternoon. It's going to be a lot of fun, very exciting. We're going to have a packed crowd here in Morgan City, Louisiana. And that's right. This stage right now is empty because it's early morning on Championship day but in a few hours it will be filled with our 10 finalists the stands will be packed with some of the best fishing fans in the country nine hundred thousand dollars up for grabs in this tournament one of these finalists holding up that big check that'll be a lot of fun launch this morning was at 7 a.m these anglers they got in the boat with a lot of anticipation they also got in the boat with a lot of rain gear expecting some cold and rainy weather and that certainly affects the way they fish when you're a professional fisherman, you have to deal with all the elements. You know, this is the conditions out here are terrible. It's freezing cold. It's raining and everything else. So you throw the back on top of it. It's just one other little element that you have to deal with. So we'll see what happens. I, I need some luck today, man. I need I need to get those those five quality bites and put them in the boat. And but I, I've got a good feeling though. And today is Valentine's Day, by the way. So got that on my side. Charlie, those anglers looking skyward all week long. It has not stopped raining all week here in Morgan City. They've had to deal with the weather a lot this week. Absolutely. It has been raining all week. Plus, the temperature's been dropping all week. And while the temperature's dropping, the water is rising, creating some very unique circumstances here on the basin. And as a result of that, none of the top 10 from last year made it back in this year. A whole new group. A new group. And 200 pros took the waterways at the beginning of this week. Just 10 survived the qualifying round. Let's take a look back now at Dave one and two on the Atchafalaya Basin. Basin event about to start and rain is forecast for all day today and also tomorrow. Dean Rojas, what does this do to your fishing? Here we go again. <laughs> I mean, you can always tell when a tournament's coming around because it's it's blowing right now and we've had rain now for the last two straight days and the water's coming up. But hopefully my areas didn't get too muddied up and hopefully we'll come with a nice bag today. There are no rain delays in professional fishing. Anglers suit up and deal with it. Not that they have to like it. What it really does to you, it just makes it really hard to really concentrate and, and uh, fish the way you really need to do. The higher and colder water changed Eric Holt's plans. The Missouri pro expected to spend the bulk of his time flipping, but in practice he found a jerkbait bite. He worked the shallow running lure over hydrilla and around cypress knees. Florida's Billy Bowen found his fish flipping and showed off some new moves, sure to gain a nomination for our Eagle Claw Hook Set Award. It was so cold, my hands were cold and uh, wet, and when I set the hook, the fish pulled so good. I mean, it wasn't that big of a fish, but it was in a tree. I mean, it ain't the first time that's ever happened to me. I've done it several times before. Bowen failed to get a limit, and he had lots of company. Only 37 pros had the five fish maximum. But a stingy at Chafalaya Basin can't keep the whole field down because these guys are too good. 20 pros had at least 13 pounds led by South Carolina's Anthony Gagliardi, who made a last-minute decision to stay close to launch and flip a black and blue jig. Well, the first one I caught was that five-pounder, and, and I knew that place had potential to produce fish, and I think I caught my second one about 30 minutes after that one, so I, then I, I knew I made the right decision then. Snickers Big Bass of the Day, wow, an eight-pound monster from Texan Mark Pack. Jambalaya Basin. Day two. 
It's day two now, and it's time for these anglers to make a run to make the cut. A total of 37 are within three pounds of making the top ten, including BF Goodrich Pro Scott Martin. Scott, big day for you today. Well, I tell you, the Lord took care of me yesterday. You know, it's it's uh, a little bit tougher than, than last year. Uh, the water's up about three feet, and the water's a lot muddier, but there is still a lot of clear water out there. It's day two, and I, a lot of the guys that caught him yesterday won't catch him today, and, and vice versa. That's a tournament truism the anglers know all too well. Proper perspective is essential to handle the pressure of making the cut. Arkansas's Mark Rose entered the day mere ounces away. You know, I'm within striking distance right now, so there's a lot of excitement, but you got to stay focused and you got a job to do too. You, you got a family to feed, so you got to you got to be able to uh, put a few fish in the boat and it's it's a it's a hard balance between being really excited and staying focused and being able to do what you got to do to catch them. On the extreme south side of Bayou Black, well over an hour from the launch. Castro Pro Carl Swebeck just completed this run. He's in an area that produced well for him on day one. Just one ounce out of the top ten, and he had success with what he calls an ugly spinnerbait. The black skirt with chartreuse and orange blades worked on day one with over 13 and a half pounds. But this morning, Swebeck caught just one fish, and it fell just short of the 14-inch minimum. Compounding Carl's quandary was a problem with a local fisherman. A uh, bird, actually. The feathered friend followed Swebeck through his best spot. Perhaps the pelican was just protecting his own honey hole. Swebeck found three keepers later and turned in just over five pounds at day's end, good for a 26th place finish. And remember Mark Rose? His focus factor was high on day two, adding nearly 13 pounds, making the cut in fourth place. I found some new current breaks with some little eddies and it's got a little running water. And that's the whole deal on, on any river system. If it's rising or falling, it doesn't really matter. You gotta find, and it's tough, always go to that running water. Headlining the charge into the final round, Wisconsin's Tom Monsoor. A total weight of 32 pounds, 11 ounces was best in the field. Charlie, the fishing got a lot tougher on day two after day one. The top ten after day one, just three of those survived in the top ten after day two. That means seven other anglers had figured some things out and made a big run. One of those guys, our Snickers pro, Chris Baumgartner. He certainly has figured things out. He is doing the same thing on day one, day two, day three, and today. His key is throwing a spinnerbait in clear water. He's the leader heading into today's competition, and he's with Taylor Carr right now. Yeah, Carlton, Chris Baumgartner is right back where he caught 13-4 yesterday to lead this event, and this is 15-inch canal. We've run about 15 minutes from launch here in the Atchafalaya Basin. Now, Baumgartner has not had a good start today, just one fish in the boat, around two pounds, but this time yesterday, he had caught two nice keepers, so he is a bit concerned. We'll hear from the Snickers Pro a bit later in the show. Thank you, Taylor. Two of our ten finalists are on the Fuji team. We've got Randy Blockett and Sam Sweat. Absolutely, Randy Blockett, the seasoned veteran, has been here many times before, and a brand newcomer to the top ten, Sam Sweat, the only one of the top ten from the state of Louisiana. He's kind of like the hometown favorite here. And that local boy is with our own Larry Nixon right now. Larry? We've been watching Sam for about 30 minutes now, and he's fishing in a natural bio. It's not a canal. And he's fishing the moss where it breaks off from three to the bottom of the creek. And he's fishing it real slow with a tandem bladed spinnerbait with Colorado blades. That forces him to reel it real slow. And he's fishing the edge of that brake line, and that's where he's catching his fish. Back to you, Carlton. There's a lot ahead on FLW Outdoors. Charlie, we'll be talking to the finalists as they fish. And absolutely, we'll have you out there on the water, in the boat with the finalists, and hopefully right in his mind to see what he's doing, how he's doing it, what baits he's using, and how the pressure is affecting him as he's fishing for the $100,000 first place prize. Today's the last day, and I'm just going to do what I've been doing, what I've been doing for 20 years, swimming this jig. I just love doing this. And if the fish are in the mood today, have a good day. Ground, across Wisconsin's Tom Monsoor. 16 pounds, 6 ounces on day one, followed by 16.5 on day two. Nearly three pounds better than anybody else. And he's on the line with us right now. Tom, you said you're in heaven out there in this rain. Well, I just, I love to fish, period. And it's a river, a lake. I like these little rivers more because you can get out of the wind and it's safer. I, I, I appreciate the safety factor. And there's so many places you can get away from other people and try and find something on your own. All right, Tom, also, you're, you're still throwing a jig that you make, 
It's one that you make and that you design. And not only is it, is it a unique jig, you use it in a very unique way. Tell us about that. Well, right now, I make these, it's taken me about 20 years to develop these little jigs that I make that swim through the grass and the wood perfectly that are balanced, that don't roll over. I'm using one they call the Mardi Gras color right now. The guys at the, at this morning at the landing all said, that's a Mardi Gras color. It's got a little pink in it, you know, and it's got a special hook is the reason I make all the, these lures that I make is because I didn't like the hooks that everybody put on their baits. Now tell us what's different about your hook, Tom. Well, I like a real small, fine wire, large gap, needle point hook that if a fish, you know, gets near it, usually you're going to get them and it doesn't take a lot of penetration. The reason being, when you're swimming a jig, they, they hit it moving and you need, you need something that uh, goes in easy and quick. And usually they, they get it really good, but today I did miss two, but one of them I was uh, just shaking my rod to get some weeds off it and one hit it you might know and he he didn't get it then all righty that's tom monsoor out on the water fishing for a hundred thousand dollars and charlie just 14 ounces separate him and chris baumgartner our leader heading into today and i'll tell you that that jig he designed said it took him 20 years to get that jig just exactly right to make it do what it wants to do in the water a very unique story there and again tom's a threat anywhere he goes but especially in a river system Fuji Pro Sam Sweat has seen success in this tournament on the FLW Tour, and that's great, but it's even more special when he can do it in front of his hometown fans. He's the only native Louisiana in this top ten. He made a 45-minute run from launch, and so also did our own Larry Nixon. He's with Sam right now. Right now, I'm with Sam Sweat from Covington, Louisiana. And Sam, is this your first top ten in a big FLW tournament? Yes, it is. It is. Oh yeah, and I'm excited, especially being from Louisiana and, um, you know, so many people have been coming up wishing me good luck and I mean, Louisiana just has an excellent state, it has most probably the best hospitality in the United States or in the world for that fact. This is an awesome looking canal you've got here. I mean, you've got that pretty black water and you're throwing a spinnerbait and I've already seen you catch two on that thing this morning and you're fishing it real slow. Would you talk to me just a little bit about how you're doing it and how you're controlling the, the boat and putting the bait in specific areas? Well, as you can see, I'm fishing a very, very narrow bayou. And being from southeast Louisiana, I love to fish natural bayous. I just feel like it, it's just, you know, coincides, with, of course, with the fish. But it's offering a lot of turns and bends, and it's offering staging areas more so than just the laydowns and the grass beds that the normal what they call wellhead canals have and basically the wellheads is literally just that there's a gas well in the back of them oil field companies come and drill them out fish love them but with the banks being so straight they literally um uh you know it offers less holding areas basically what you're doing is paralleling these little mill foil edges and throwing a spinner bait there he's got one good fish come on be a good fish oh yeah he wanted to form for the camera. Ooh, that's a good one. <clears throat> All right. All yes. right. Way to go, Sam. Well, that was an awesome fish catch right uh, there. Yes. See, sometimes camera guys bring a guy good luck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Larry. You don't need luck. It's all skill with you. Good job. Oh, yeah. That's what it takes. Let me get him in the well. What the fish do when it turns cold like this, a lot of times they back away from the bank and they get off of that obvious flipping cover and they actually get down off of that lip just a little bit and they hide in behind them millfoil patches. And when you slow roll a spinnerbait like Sam's doing, he's just creeping it along and dropping it down in them little holes where you can still make them bite. Well, Sam, I want to thank you for letting us come out and interviewing you and you taking the time to put up with us. And I want to see you back at the way in with a Big sack. Catch I will. Big Can I kicker. say one thing? Yeah. John Sapperton, get well. We're all praying for you. That's right. That's a good thought right there. Back to you, Carlton, and FLW Outdoors. Well, thanks, Larry. Let's talk about our Fuji pros now. We got Sam Sweat and Randy Blockett, two Fuji pros. They were giving high fives to each other when they both made the I cut. I got to tell you, the Fuji team is well represented there. Again, a very seasoned veteran with a brand new top, first time top 10 guy. It's really, really good for Fuji. All right, and another happy angler, Chris Baumgartner, in just his second FLW top 10. Taylor Carr will be with Chris Baumgartner, our leader, coming up. That's the good thing about a bass. He's just I will do anything. I will hit anything at any time. You just don't know. Uh. 
Oh, come out there, baby. Come out. Come on, baby. Come here. Come here, baby. Please. Come. Open your mouth. Open up. Thank you, Lord. That's why I decided to fish the mat today right there. Welcome back to FLW Outdoors. We're joining you from Morgan City, Louisiana, the site of the second stop on the Walmart FLW Tour. And you can see the stage behind us is getting ready. We're getting closer to the championship weigh-in. One of our finalists will win $100,000. Well, let's talk about our 10 finalists now and one of the great characters on the tour, Cody Bird. Cody Bird, Yamaha Pro from Granbury, Texas. I'll tell you what, this is a former bull rider, is what he did. He did that just for sheer enjoyment. I can't imagine that. <laughs> He's rode some, got thrown off a lot of them, but Cody Bird's out there bucking up and down in the water today. Uh, I think that rodeo probably helped prepare him for the waterways he saw this week with all the rain that we have had, and the rain is coming down pretty hard right now. He was with our Taylor car a little bit earlier this morning. Let's hear that interview right now. Thanks, guys. This is Cody Bird from Granbury, Texas, who had 5'7 yesterday. He's a bit more than 8 pounds off the lead, but with the kind of start he's had, Cody, you might be poised to make a run. Yeah, that's, that's the only chance I really had was come in here and flip for these big ones all day. You know, I had a good shot at it yesterday if I just landed the fish that bit me. And today I'm just going to have to catch all big ones. That'll be my only chance. I think I'll have to have 20 pounds to have a chance to win. And I have one. I need four more. We just watched you catch that nice one. How did it come to you? Well, it's, it's kind of a funny bite. You'll pitch in there. Of course, I'm using an ounce and a half weight here, and you'll pitch in there, and sometimes it sticks to the bottom, and you think one has it, and you'll pull up. won't be anything, and the next time a big old bass will have a hold of it. They just kind of pull up there and sit down on it. I've been using the new lure I made called the Bird Dog, which is a little skinnier profile, but right now I'm using the Lake Fork Crawl Tube, and I'm using an ounce and a half tungsten weight to punch these mass and having trouble getting through it with them. Now visualize for us, what do you have planned for the rest of the day to get about a 20, 22 pound sack and win this thing? I'm just going to keep moving. Uh, of course, you know, we, you can see we've done fish to 200 yard, 300 yard stretch and I'm just going to keep fishing new water and maybe let that rest a while and come back and hit the spots where, you know, I get bit. Of course, yesterday I did that. I uh, caught two and then I made another pass down it and caught or got the other bite where I hadn't even been bit, you know, so I think they're just kind of cruising up and down under these mats. All right, Cody, you've had a good start. We're going to let you fish. Good luck the rest of the day. We'll see you at the weigh-in tent. Okay, I appreciate it. All right, there's Cody Bird from Granbury, Texas. Has one nice fish in the boat. He's trying to make a charge from about eight pounds down. Well, Cody has a little bit going. What he lacks in quantity, he has made up for with some quality. We'll see how he does in the rest of the day. Let's get right back out on the water now. Mike Sermon is on the line. Now, Mike had a great day one, uh, just on the cusp of making that top ten, and then day two sealed the deal in his sixth FLW top ten. He's a longtime veteran of the FLW Tour. And, Mike, you are known for your success on Florida's waterways, but you really like coming to the Atchafalaya as well. Yeah, I do. You know, this this place I love to flip and pitch and this place uh, you know pretty well allows me to do that um, in fact right now I'm fishing kind of exactly how we do back home at Okeechobee I'm I'm flipping mats you say you're flipping the mats just like you do at Okeechobee describe to us what you're trying to accomplish there is it thicker the vegetation the better yeah Charlie right now when when it's real cold like this and the water's real cold what I decided to do was try to get the thickest vegetation that you can and uh, hopefully that's where the bigger fish are going to be buried up in because it's cold. Right now, that's my game plan, is getting the thickest stuff I can possibly find. You've got it all set up just right, Mike. Again, hopefully the water warm up a little bit, and you will catch them before the day's out. Good luck to you today. Thanks a bunch, Charlie. All right, that's Mike Sermon now. He entered the day in seventh place, seven pounds off of our leader, Chris Baumgartner. Everybody's chasing Chris with that total weight of 13 pounds and four ounces. So far, the only person that's been able to catch up with Chris this morning is our own Taylor Carr. He's with Chris right now. This is Chris Baumgartner from Gastonia, North Carolina. Had 13-4 yesterday in the lead, but Chris, a one pound separates you. Less than a pound, you in third place. You're in a tight race here. Yeah, it couldn't be much tighter. When you went back to weigh in yesterday with 13.4, did you think that was good enough to lead? I figured it was going to be a little more than that. But I thought I'd be in pretty good shape. But I didn't think I'd be leading, no. Now, if you hang on to your lead, this will be your first FLW win. Did you think about that at all last night? 
a little bit. Try not to. Uh, try not to think too much about it. I don't want to get too excited out here. It's hard not to. Though. That'd be a big deal. These things are not easy to win. Well, Chris, good luck the rest of the day. Regardless, you've made a top 10. You're going to have a great finish. Congratulations. Super job. Thanks. I appreciate it. In the Snickers boat, Snickers pro Chris Baumgartner from Gastonia, North Carolina. Thanks a lot, Taylor. Charlie, we've gotten a great snapshot for how our finalists are fishing so far on championship day. The one thing we have learned is the fishing is getting tougher as the tournament's going along. We caught a lot of fish here on day one and two, but again, the water's coming up. It's getting a lot colder. Conditions are really tightening up, and the pressure is really mounting. And the rain is coming down today. When we come back on FLW Outdoors, we're going to take you out to the weigh-in stage. Our 10 finalists will be there, and the shootout-style weigh-in starts next on FLW Outdoors.